I'm Tanya Beckett joining you live from the World Economic Forum in Davos. Fiscal challenges. Can governments afford to pay back the debts they now have? And is there a solution at hand? It's been four decades since you first invited European business leaders up this mountain and you gave them a pretty stark message. Modernise and adapt or fall behind and fail. We are in some way in a post-crisis world. We do not know yet whether we will be really capable to master all the multiple challenges we are facing now. Welcome to the 41st annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. Essayons d'apporter des idées nouvelles face à des problèmes d'une ampleur et d'une complexité jamais égalée. Some problems are so complicated in the world, they need to be addressed by a new form of organization like we have here in Davos. Nowhere in the world is there another forum which brings together governments, NGOs, corporate leaders, activists, artists, musicians to all come together and talk about the biggest issues facing the world. Where else in the world can I talk to Jeffrey Sachs, President Clinton, the head of the World Bank, all in the same room? What was exciting, in addition to having most of the G8 leaders here, we of course had uh, President Medvedev coming after a tragic bombing because he actually wanted to show that the new norm to deal with that is to actually to come together rather than to let terrorist issues draw us apart. Нашей солидарности и согласованных действий зависит успех противостоянию этой общей угрозе. It is actually a common platform of putting priorities, shaping agendas, and also defining opportunities by talking about them in a common in one place. You actually align a little bit of thinking of quite a lot of important decision makers and leaders. And we started with Medvedev and then we ended up with a new Tunisian government, which actually reflected real time the extraordinary dynamics taking place in political systems, uh, particularly in the Middle East. Because democracy here that is built is really horizontal. The international community is looking at us, so let's maximize our chance of delivering. In the end, we're talking about people. By having a greater interaction between companies, so let's say coming from India, another from Korea, from Brazil, from Mexico, from Russia, I think over time that certainly contributes to improvement of the, of the understanding between people in general, eventually between countries. If you look to where inventions are taking place, where economic growth is coming from, it's not from within the sector, it's the combination between areas of expertise that are coming together. So the social agenda, the economic agenda, the political agenda coming together delivers much more powerful things than if each and everyone stays in their own silo. People really eager to share their view, their value with all the other participants. I think that's great. And interaction, I think that is just like not just only social or talking to the people, but I felt the sincereness, involvement, that is great. For those positions, do more than a man can do. It's possible. One of the things we talked about in this room was the G20 and the fact that since the crisis there has been no mention of women in the G20 deliberations, yet everybody's searching for global solutions to our economic ills, if you will. It's a tragedy that our world leaders aren't focused enough and don't understand, obviously, the economic business case for the empowerment of women. So here's the question, how do we address the need for fuels for mobility in the context of a need of biomass for food, as well as water to support that? And countries that may be doing well on the 
affairs to but ignore human rights and rule of law cannot prosper. For you actually are confronted with a lot of different questions, questions that you probably would have never asked before in that way. And that is the only path to new discovery. Können wir sagen, wir haben schon die richtigen Mechanismen und Strukturen, um ein nachhaltiges, ausgewogenes Wachstum weltweit und dauerhaft zu sichern. Because it doesn't force decision making and just opens people's minds and eyes to the issues of the world, it allows people to leave these forum meetings and prepare responses the way they think it should be done for their countries. Don't just talk about the challenges we face, do something about them. You heard about the Water Initiative? It started here five years ago. There was a CEO, granted. There were some NGOs that were talking about it, and most of the world didn't even know anything about it. Today it's real, with governments, with companies, and most of the world understands we're going to run out of water before we run out of oil and gas. If that's not impact, I don't know what is. We have catalyzed partnerships with two country-level governments, uh, Vietnam and Tanzania, to help develop new models of public-private partnership, increase investment in agriculture. In this blueprint, we look for the participation of large-scale farmers in partnership with the public sector, that is the government, and the development partners of Tanzania. It's impossible uh, to spend several days in Davos without uh, thinking and imagining how the world is going to change over the course of the next year, five years, ten years. I think the biggest impact, which is, I think, one of the fondest wishes of the founders and the people that uh, continue to direct the World Economic Forum, is for a greater level of understanding and breaking down the barriers between countries, companies, cultures. I think it's impossible for that not to happen uh, in this setting. So the atmosphere was a mixture of optimism, entrepreneurial drive, new inspiration, but on the other hand, I think people were well aware that uh, the global agenda is full of challenges and that we have to work very closely together on a global level with shared values to deal with this new reality.